Welcome back to Sharp's Cannon. I'm your host, Captain Rutledge. When we last left Sharp and Harper, they spent Christmas of 1812 bravely defending their position at the Gateway of God. They met with old foes, made new enemies, and bade a final farewell to Teresa Moreno. Now, it is 1813. Napoleon's invasion of Russia has ended in failure. In order to hold out against his growing list of enemies, he has been withdrawing French troops from Spain. Only a few scattered garrisons now hold on to power for King Joseph. General Wellington, seeing his chance, forces his way up through northern Spain, beating back the French through the spring and summer, until finally facing off against Marshal Jourdan at Vittoria. Although the French were superior in armaments, the Allied Anglo-Portuguese-Spanish forces outnumbered the French 90,000 to 60,000. The larger Allied force won the day, beating back the French and forcing a general retreat, leaving their baggage train behind. The British forces took to plundering the wagons, abandoning all discipline in favor of the riches contained within. This led to one of the most famous remarks by General Wellington. We have in the service the scum of the earth as common soldiers. It is in this campaign that the events of Sharp's Honor take place. Sharp's Honor was the sixth novel of the Sharp series, originally published in 1985. Its TV series episode premiered in 1994, directed by Tom Clegg and written by Colin McDonald. The regular cast returns, in addition to Michael Byrne as Major Nairn, Fedor Atkin as Major Duco, Diana Perez as Ramona, and guest actors Matthew Skirfield as El Matarife, Nicholas Grace as Father Acha, and Alice Crige as La Marquesa. This would be the final episode for Michael Byrne, likely suffering from the usual effects of filming in Crimea. He would be replaced in the next three episodes by Hugh Ross, playing Major Mungo Munro. The original novel included characters previously introduced in the earlier novel, Sharp's Sword. However, since the TV series had yet to adapt that novel, most context for these characters is not included. Call this a uh, Sins of the Father issue. The TV episode begins with Major Duco in audience with Napoleon during the retreat from Russia, planning out a new scheme for a Franco-Spanish alliance against Wellington's army, their instrument of alliance being Major Richard Sharp. The novel instead starts off with Duco meeting Father Acha and Acha's brother, El Matarife. So, what's the plan? The Marquesa de Casares Grande y Melita Sadaba will write a letter to her husband claiming Major Richard Sharp made drunken advances at her, narrowly avoiding rape. The Marquesa will then challenge Sharp to a duel for his wife's honor, which would soon be called off by the authorities. Then, while the Marquise is sleeping, he will be mysteriously murdered, Sharp will take the blame and be hanged, the Marquesa will be sent off to a convent, and her fortune will go to the church. And Anglo-Spanish relations will crumble to the point of reinstating King Ferdinand, forging a new alliance with France. Everybody got that? When we meet up with Sharp, he is much the same in both storylines, depressed and still mourning Teresa's death. Harper, meanwhile, is preparing to wed his Spanish sweetheart. In the novels, her name is Isabella, but it was changed to Ramona for the TV series. Duco meets with the Marquesa, blackmailing her into writing out an inflammatory letter against Major Sharp, whom in the TV episode she claims she doesn't know. You will write a letter telling your husband the reason you fled is that an English officer, Major Richard Sharp, has forced his intentions on you. I've never met this Sharp. The novels had Sharp and the Marquesa meet once before during the events of Sharp's sword. Her birth name was Hélène Leroux, sister of Colonel Philippe Leroux, French interrogator. Sharp and Hélène formed a relationship getting pretty freak gay, until Sharp discovered she was working for the French. Suffice it to say, the TV episode gets her promiscuity down to a T. Naturally, after receiving the letter, the Marquesse 
challenges Sharp to a duel with Captain Dallenbord serving as Sharp's second. At the climax, the duel is called off by Major Nairn in the TV episode, Colonel Leroy in the novel. The Marquess is murdered in bed, and Sharp is arrested in connection, though both Wellington and Nairn slash Hogan are both dubious. Sharp's court-martial goes south, and he is presumably hanged, while the Marquesa is hauled off to a convent by Father Acha and El Matarife. Here's where things get sticky adaptation-wise. Bear with me. So you believe in ghosts, do you, Sergeant? I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and the she riding the wind. Here's a ghost for you, Sergeant Harper. Of course, Sharp is not dead, but rather roped into intelligence work for Nairn slash Hogan. The episode has Harper discovering the truth as both set out to find La Marquesa, while the novel has Captain Fredrickson learn the truth, and Sharp sets out with a partisan boy named Angel to find La Marquesa. Harper wasn't even aware until the end of the novel that Sharp was still alive. Either way, the nature of Sharp's escape from certain death is intact. His name was Liam Dooley. He and his brother were going to be hanged for looting a church. I made them an offer. One could live, but one would die. Liam called Hedge. It was a very bad call. While both Sharp and Harper are away in the TV series, Ramona gives birth with the chosen men standing in as midwives. Patrick, Jose, Hackman, Cooper, Harris, Perkins, Harper. She called him after the midwives. <laughs> Harper did eventually father a child in the novels, though the boy was born in 1814 and was named Richard Patrick Harper. Sharp would later reciprocate by naming his first son Patrick Henri Lassan, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Sharp and Harper slash Angel meet Matarife's partisans with Sharp posing as a British exploring officer named Major Vaughn. They ask about the Marquesa. Matarife tries to fool them with a the dead peasant girl but Sharp is not convinced since the peasant was brunette while Marquesa is blonde. Sharp eventually finds the convent and rescues the Marquesa, riding off with Matarife's partisans in hot pursuit. They rough it outdoors in the TV episode while the trio stay at an inn during the novel, where Sharp and Elaine, the Marquesa's true name, renew their tryst, before being rudely awakened by Matarife and forced on the run again. Both stories have them discovered by French cavalry led by General Verigny. Angel slash Harper escape, while Sharp is taken to Major Duco for questioning. You will speak when you're spoken to. That's the British way. Why did you go such length to rescue the Marquesa? It was her birthday. I'd made her a cake. That's not funny! Oh. Oh. The episode tries wrapping things up pretty quickly. Sharp is rescued by the chosen men, they blow up the French garrison, they go home and they save the day. The novel, however, takes a little more time. For one thing, Sharp is forced to give his parole to General Verigny, and after torture from Duco, including smashing his prized telescope, He agrees. Naturally, both Elaine and Verigny hatch a plan to allow Sharp to escape his parole, though Sharp finds it dishonorable. Never mind, though, because the castle he's in gets blown up. Angel returns to take him back to the British lines, and let's continue. Elaine accompanies the French, but is again captured by Matarife. During the final battle of Vittoria, Sharp leads the South Essex forwards, capturing the French guns and saving the day, though they recognize Elaine with Matarife's men in the distance. Sharp and Harper fly off in pursuit, plundering the baggage train along the way. Elaine's in the episode, King Joseph's in the novel. The novel even has Sharp pilfering a handful of jewelry for himself. When the men finally catch up to El Matarife, Sharp challenges him to a duel with chain and knife. Sharp eventually comes out on top, forcing confessions out of Matarife, before the partisan is killed by Major Mendora. The novel, meanwhile, had Matarife getting his throat cut by Sharp. Further scenes were added for the episode. 
When all goes awry, Duco confronts Father Acha and shoots him dead. You call me a liar. While riding away, Duco comes across two French patrolmen who fail to recognize him and bayonet him when challenged. Afterwards, the sergeant goes through his papers. Well, can you read this? There's no pictures. Both stories end similarly. Sharp and Helene say their final goodbyes as Helene is courteously sent back to France. As a gift, she gives Sharp a new telescope. It's not mentioned in the TV series, but the novel has her buying it off a cavalry officer who stole it from Joseph's baggage train. The telescope is even inscribed to Joseph, King of Spain and the Indies, from his brother, Napoleon, Emperor of France. Everybody watching at home, take close note of this new spyglass and inscription. It will come into play in the novels later on. Anyhow, that was Sharp's Honor. This is likely one of the biggest demarcation points in the series and its relationship with the original source novels. Previously established character interactions have been omitted for less confusion, but by far the biggest problem is the weather. Bloody crazy! Must be the weather, ma'am. You see, the Battle of Vittoria was fought in June of 1813. I've never been to Spain, but I feel I can state with certainty that you won't find snow there in the summer months. This is likely due to the episode production order. In 1993, the schedule for filming in Crimea started with Sharp's Enemy and Sharp's Company during August and early autumn, finishing with Sharp's Honor that November. Had they switched the order of Enemy and Honor, things would have played out better, but I'd imagine there were prior commitments for the actors that prevented filming in relation to the weather, and this is what we got. Not terrible, but still. Furthermore, it appears the production team had little foresight for what would happen going ahead or even if another series would be ordered. Hence why we see Duco dying at the end of honor, then alive and kicking in Sharp Siege. I got better. In short, Sharp's honor is somewhat of a transition. It is not a very tidy transition, but it is nonetheless a transition. What the devil's going on here? We're delivering a baby, sir. Right, carry on. And how will that transition work out? Tune in next time as we meet Wellington's cousins, poultry thieves, and a group of Aztecs that somehow wound up in Spain 300 years later. Sharp and Harper will march again. Good day.